In this video, I want to talk a little bit about what's beneath the digital abstraction. So, in an earlier video, I mentioned that logic gates are the building blocks of any digital computer. But how are those logic gates even built? So this is the question that I want to answer in this video. So before I begin, it's a good idea to talk about logic levels because before if you remember I talked about the inputs to be either 0 or 1 or the output to be 0 or 1. But in reality 0 or 1 is represented as some uh, voltage values in our circuit. So there are discrete voltages that represent 1 and 0. For example, 0 can be considered as ground or uh, as a symbol GND or 0 volts. On the other hand, 1, which is usually referred to as VDD or 5 volts, is a good representation of uh, a true value for uh, a logic signal. But when you say uh, the voltage is either 0 or 5 volts, what happens if you have a voltage uh, between 0 and 5 volt. What about a voltage of 4.99? Is that a 0 or 1? What about a voltage of 3.2? Is that a 0 or 1? So, uh, common, says, common sense says that 4.99 it is very close to 5, right? So we can consider it as a 1. But on the other hand, 3.2 is not as close, so maybe this is a zero. So based on this, we need to specify some range for the voltages to be considered either one or zero. And this range can be different for the inputs and outputs of uh, the logic circuit as well, so we can allow for the noise that we may have in our circuit. So now that we have this, let's just go over and see what is noise. So in this context, a noise is defined as anything that degrades the signal. So whether it's some resistance in the wires that we use, some noise in the power supply, or some noise as a result of coupling between neighboring wires, or so on and so forth. So all of these are considered noise. Why? Because they degrade the signal. So for example, let's just say we have a generic gate. Here I show this generic gate by this buffer. And I call this as a driver because this drives the, the next gate, which is the receiver. So the driver provides a 5 volt voltage at its output here. But because of the resistance in the wire that we are using for the connection, the voltage that the receiver receives at its uh, input is 4.5. So this uh, last 0.5 volt, you can say, is lost as a result of the noise, which is the resistance in the wire that we have. So now, before I continue, let's quickly go over two basic concepts which fall under the uh, concept of static discipline. So the first one says that with logically valid inputs every circuit element must produce logically valid outputs. So that means that if we define or if we specify some range for the values of 0 or for values of 1, uh, every circuit element that we have in our circuit should work uh, properly and should produce some values that fall within the predefined range. And the other concept in static discipline says that we should use limited range of voltages to discrete uh, to represent discrete values. So if you want to have let's say uh, 0 and 1 and you want to use 0 volt and 5 volt to, to represent those as for the range, you cannot have between 0 and 3 for uh, level 0 and between 2 and 5 for level uh, 1. Why? Because they overlap. 
So in between, you don't know which one is which, right? Also, to account for noise, you should have these ranges very uh, limited. So the, there is not that much fluctuation in the uh, operation. So based on this, let's just uh, describe some basic circuits using a driver and a receiver gate. So for the driver gate, the only thing that is important for us is the output characteristics of the driver gate because these are uh, the ones that affect the signal that we receive at the receiver. And for the receiver, we only care about the input characteristics. So for the output characteristics, as we said, we want to have a range of uh, values for the voltage that represent um, the high out output. And we want to have a range of values for the voltage that represent the low uh, output. To define this, considering this as to be zero or ground and this one to be uh, VDD or let's say five volts, right we have vol and voh vol is the maximum value for the output for it to still be considered as low or zero and voh is the minimum value for the output for it to still be considered as high so these are the output characteristics what about the input char characteristics for the receiver for that, we define VIH and VIL. So VIH is the uh, minimum value for the uh, input voltage to still be considered as high. And VIL is uh, the maximum value for the input to still be considered as low. So now that we have this, we can define the uh, high and low noise margins. So the high noise margin is defined as subtraction of VOH, so VOH and VIH. And for this to be valid, this needs to be a positive value. On the other hand, for the low noise margin, we define it as VIL minus VOL, basically the uh, VIL as the characteristic of the receiver, the input characteristic of the receiver, minus VOL as one of the output characteristics of the uh, driver that we have in the circuit. So let's just take a look at one example. So as for the ideal buffer, if you remember from before, we said that the output of the buffer is zero when the input is zero and the output is one when the uh, input is one, right? But let's just assume we have a range of values that can change between 0 and VDD or between 0 and 5 volts, right? If we change the values for the input, how do you expect the values for the output change? In an ideal case, when you change the value uh, for the input, so this uh, horizontal line represents the input value. When you start from 0, and you go to the right. As long as the input voltage is less than VDD over 2 or uh, 2.5 volts, the output should be 0. So the vertical line represents the output. But as soon as you pass uh, VDD over 2, so from this point thereafter, the output should suddenly jump to VDD or 5 volts. So this is what we expect from uh, an ideal buffer. And if you have this ideal buffer, you can see that 
uh, the noise margins for both low and high signals is going to be VDD over 2. Remember the noise margin high was VOH minus VIH. So as you can see here, noise margin high was VOH minus VIH. So VOH is VDD. VIH is VDD over 2. So if you do the subtraction, it's going to be VDD over 2. You can do the same for the uh, noise margin low as well and get to the uh, same conclusion. So this is the ideal buffer that we can have. But in uh, reality, that is not the case. We cannot have a sudden jump like this. Uh, in reality what happen, uh, usually happens is we have usually a smooth curve with very high uh, slope in the point of transition but nonetheless it is not a sudden jump like we have seen here for the ideal uh, buffer. right? So for the real case, how can we calculate the values for VOH, VIH, VOL, and VIL? The answer to that is by calculating the uh, derivative or slope of this curve. There are two points at which the slope equals 1. And these two points give us the values for VIH, VIL and VOL and VOH. So the first point gives us the value for VIL and VOL. The second point with a slope of 1 or derivative of 1 gives us the value for uh, VIH and VOH. So now if you calculate the noise margins for high signal and noise margin for low signal you see that it is going to be less than VDD over 2 so it is less than the ideal case so now that we have this uh, graph we basically can use it to find out what are the uh, output characteristics or the input characteristics of uh, a real uh, buffer. As I said, the first point at which the slope is 1 gives us VIL and VOL. The second point at which mm, the slope is 1 gives us VIH and uh, VOH. For example, for this uh, specific case, as you can see, VOL is here and VOH is very close to VDD as you can see uh, here so the distance here is very small on the other hand uh, VIH and VIL they are far uh, much further from 0 and VDD but as you can see VIL is uh, a little bit farther from 0 than VIH is from VDD, right? So it is not, uh, you can say, symmetric. It is a little bit obscure, right? But nonetheless, since the value for noise margin high and noise margin low is still greater than zero, this is a valid uh, transfer, a DC transfer characteristic, right? So now that we have this, so far we said that VDD, let's just consider it 5 volts, right? And for, a, for, a longest, for the longest time, it was 5 volt. And it's still there are uh, logic gate families that work with VDD of 5 volts, right? So one thing that you should know, VCC or VDD are uh, used interchangeably in this course. And the main reason for that is uh, depending on the uh, circuit that is being used to uh, build these logic gates. 
sometimes the the DC voltage uh, is connected to the uh, collector of a transistor sometimes it's connected to the drain of a uh, transistor and that's why we use both VCC and VDD right of course if you go and refer to the books that are uh, talking uh, more about the electronics in general uh, you see the, the distinction between the two but for now we don't focus on the distinction so anytime I say VCC or VDD they are basically uh, practically the same thing for all intentions and purposes for this course so in 1970s and 1980s VDD were usually 5 volts right but over the years and with the introduction of better and more precise uh, logic gate families the value for VDT has dropped one to avoid uh, burning tiny transistors and also to save power so now nowadays we usually have VDD to be 3.3, 2.5, 1.8, 1.5, 1.2, 1.2, 1 volt as you can see they are decreasing right so now because of this the question becomes can uh, different logic gates that are built using different technologies or different uh, based on different VDD values can they be connected together or not and the answer to that is it depends so there is no uh, single answer to this question to see how uh, what I mean by that let's just go over four different uh, logic families that are very common in practice we have the TTL which is short for the transistor to transistor logic we have CMOS which is short for complementary metal oxide semiconductor and then we can have LV TTL and LV CMOS which LV stands for low voltage so for each one of these families as you can see the values for VDD VIH v, uh, VIL VOL and VOH are different so for uh, VDD for TTL and CMOS the value for VDD is generally 5 right but the range of the values that the logic gate can accept is a bit different the same is true for uh, low voltage TTL and low voltage CMOS of course here uh, both the values are uh, and the range are uh, exactly the same but you cannot say the same thing about the VIH, VIL, VOL and VOH so any one of these is uh, is different so one thing that uh, you should clearly see is that um, any one of these families can be connected to any logic gate from the same family right if that was not the case then what was even the point if you cannot connect logic gate from the same family to each other then uh, there was something wrong but what if you want to use a gate from a TTL family as a driver and then connect it to a gate from uh, a CMOS family as a receiver then is it possible or not so to answer this question you have to calculate the uh, noise margins for different combinations here is a table that shows all the possible combinations on the left you see all these four uh, gate families if they are being used as a driver and for the columns you see all these uh, families logic families if they are being used as the receiver so let's just go through these uh, uh, cells one by one so as I said before any gate from a single family can be connected to 
uh, a gate from the same family and that should be okay. So that's what we see for all these uh, OKs in the diagonal, right? So as you can see here, for this one, for example, we have a driver from a TTL family and a receiver from a TTL family. For this one, we have a driver from a uh, LV TTL family and a receiver from LV TTL family. So now let's see if we can mix and match between uh, drivers and receivers from uh, different families. So let's just see if we can uh, have a driver from a TTL family and a receiver from a CMOS family. So if we consider this, since the VOH is smaller than VIH, the answer to our initial question is no. So we cannot use a TTL gate as receiver and have a CMOS gate, uh, sorry, we cannot have a TTL gate as driver and have a CMOS gate as a receiver. But what about the other way around? Can we have a CMOS gate as a dri driver and have a uh, TTL gate as a receiver? The answer to that is yes. Why? Because the noise margins that we calculate in this case are going to be both positive. So this is indicative that we can use a CMOS gate as a driver while having a TTL gate as a receiver, but not the other way around. As you can see here, there are some cells in the table that have maybe, and that all depends on the uh, voltages that we use for uh, the VDD. So I highly suggest you go through some examples and see what happens if you have a different values for the VDD, of course within the, uh, within the possible range that um, you can have for each one of these uh, families. So now that we have seen this, let's just go a little bit uh, beneath what happens inside uh, logic gates. So how are the logic gates are being made? So we use uh, transistors to, be, uh, to build logic gates. So what is a transistor? So generally speaking, transistor is a three-ported voltage control switch. What does it even mean? In a transistor, we have usually two ports that are either connected or not connected depending on the voltage of the third uh, port. So if we have, let's say, this uh, generic figure for a transistor, right? D and S are connected or not connected depending on the value for G. For this specific transistor, if G is zero, so if the value for G is zero, that means that D and S are not connected. So in another word, you can say the transistor is off. On the other hand, if G is 1, then D and S are going to be connected. So in another word, the transistor is on. So again, D, drain, and source S are connected, or we say the transistor is on when the gate is 1. And the transistor is off or DNS are not connected when the gate is zero. So Robert Noyce was one of the persons who co-invented the integrated circuits. He was one of the co-founders of Intel and also he co-founded Fairchild semi Semiconductor in 1957 and he has been nicknamed as the mayor of uh, Silicon Valley for his contributions to the field of semiconductor. So transistors are built from silicon, which is a semiconductor. So it's not a full conductor, it's not an in insulator, but it is a semiconductor, uh, somewhere in between. So uh, pure silicon is a poor conductor. Why? Because there are no free charges, so there are no free electrons or free protons that can travel inside the uh, 
inside the, the lattice, right? But if the silicon is doped, it can uh, be a good conductor. Why? Because now we have free charges that can travel around and they can be used to uh, transfer electrical energy, right? Again, I'm just going it as a super, I'm talking about this thing as a, in a very superficial level. If you are more interested, I refer you to uh, courses in electronics, electronics 1 and electronics 2. So there are two types of doped uh, silicon. We can have an n-type in which we have free negative charges or free electrons. Or we can have a p-type semiconductor silicon in which we have free holes or free protons that can travel through the, uh, the lattice. So depending on which one of these we use to build the transistor, we can have either a p-type or an n-type uh, transistor. So metal oxide silicon transistors, they contain, uh, they are considered of several uh, parts. So if you consider this as a generic representation of a metal oxide silicon transistor, you see we have uh, a source and a drain. They are all uh, n-type silicons. We have a substrate which is a p-type silicon and then we have a gate that is connected uh, between the source and the drain. So this uh, oxide uh, layer, the silicon dioxide here, is an insulator. Uh, so what happens when we have this type of transistor? So this is a, a generic representation of an NMOS transistor. So what happens if the gate is zero or what happens if the gate is one? When the gate is zero, the transistor is to be set uh, off. Why? Because there is no connection between the two uh, n-type silicons that we have for the source and drain. But what happens when the gate is one? In that case, a channel is being formed in which the trans the uh, negative charges can easily travel so when the gate is on since there is a connection between the end type that is used for the source and the end type that is used for the drain we say that we have a connection between the two and we say that the transistor is on so this was what happens for the NMOS transistor. The PMOS transistor is the complete opposite. So the transistor is on when the gate is zero and it is off when the gate is one. So these two concepts can be summarized in this very simplistic figure. So we have the symbol for the NMOS transistor. We have drain and source and then we have the gate. For the PMOS transistor, it's almost identical, except we have this circle uh, that is connected to the gate. When the gate is zero, the NMOS, is tra NMOS transistor is off, so that means that there is no connection between D and S. On the other hand, when the gate is one, the transistor is on, which means that there is a connection between D and S. On the other hand, for the PMOS transistor, the transistor is on when the gate is zero and the transistor is off when the gate uh, is one. So now that we saw this, how can we make logic gate using these uh, different transistors? So you remember these three representations that we had from before. So this was the symbolic representation or the schematic representation of the uh, gate. The second one was the Boolean equation representation of the gate. And then the third one 
was the truth table representation of the gate. So this one is the fourth representation of the logic gate. And you can say this is the transistor representation of the logic gate. So here we have the input A to the left and we have the output Y to the right. We have ground or zero and we have VDD or one or five volts, right? These are all equivalent. For the NOT gate, we have one NMOS transistor and one PMOS transistor. We name them N1 and P1. And then to create this, uh, basically to verify if this circuit is uh, in fact a NOT gate, we can create an extended uh, truth table to see what happens when we change the value for A. As you can see here, A is connected to the gates of uh, both of these transistors, right? So if uh, A is zero, depending on the time of the type of the transistor, either the transistor is on or off. So let's just go through this extended uh, truth table one by one and see what happens. So what happens when A is zero? When A is zero, the PMOS transistor, depending on this legend, is going to be on. So P1 is on when A is zero. On the other hand, N1 is going to be off based on this. So this is off. So let's just see what happens when uh, P1 is on. When P1 is on, that means that there is a connection between these two points. On the other hand, for the NMOS transistor, there is no connection between the two. So now based on this, the output is going to be connected to VDD, right? So since the output is now connected to VDD, we say that the output is 1. I can create uh, a simpler figure here too with less confusion. So this is the ground, this one is uh, VDD. And this is for the case that A is 0. And here we have Y, right? So as I said, when A is 0, the P1 transistor is on, while the N1 transistor is off. So if you follow the path from the output, is it going to be connected to VDD or ground? It is going to be connected to the VDD, right? Because uh, the path from Y to ground is not connected. So based on this, the value for Y is going to be 1 or VDD. Now let's see what happens when A is, zero, A is 1. So in this case, the PMOS transistor, P1, is going to be off. So this is off. While the N1 transistor is going to be on. So now, let me just quickly draw a similar uh, sh uh, shape or figure for this case as well. So this is VDD. Uh, we said that the N1 transistor is on while the P1 transistor is off. And here we have Y at the output. So this is for A being 1. So now, as you can see, Y is being connected to ground. And since ground is equal to 0, Y will be considered 0. 
So as you can see here, for a being 0, y is 1. And that is exactly similar to what we had for the original truth table. Again, when a is 1, y is 0. And that, again, is exactly what we had for the second row of the original truth table. So now, based on this analysis, we verified that this is a correct representation of a NOT gate. So let's just make it a little bit uh, more complicated. What about a two input NAND gate? Again, we have this first representation, a symbolic or schematic representation. We have this uh, Boolean equation representation. We have this truth table representation. And finally, we have uh, this new uh, transistor representation of the, uh, of the gate. So here it is connected to VDD and here it is connected to the ground. So again we have this extended truth table since we have two inputs. Our truth table has uh, four rows now. We have P1, P2 and N1 and N2 as the four transistors. And for each one of these rows we want to find out if Y is being connected to VDD or GN, uh, GND. So let's just go through this one by one. As you can see, A is being connected uh, to the gate of N1 and the gate of P1. So this is A, this is A. Here you see there is no connection. If, if there was any connection, we should have shown it with, uh, with a dot. Here we have a connection because it's a T-junction. Right? On the other hand, B is connected to the gate of N2 and P2. So now let's just fill out this, uh, this table first this part of the table for the status of the um, transistors P1, P2, N1, and N2. And then finally we go through uh, each one of the rows one by one and see what is the value for Y. So what happens if uh, A is being, if A is zero? If A is zero, what happens to P1? P1 is going to be on. So any time that A is 0, P1 is on. What about N1? N1 is being off because the gate of N1 is also connected to uh, A. So this is going to be off. So that means that any time that A is uh, 1, P1 is going to be off and N1 is going to be on. Now let's see what happened for, uh, for B. When B is 0, B is connected to the gate of N2 and P2. So when B is 0, P2 is going to be on again. So P2 is on anytime B is 0. So here B is 0, here is also B is 0. What about N2? Anytime B is 0, N2 is off. So this is off, this one is off. And then that means that anytime B is 1, P2 is off and N2 is going to be on. So now that we have filled out this part of the, uh, the extended truth table, we can easily see uh, if Y is connected to VDD or ground at any of these stages, states, right? So let me just quickly draw 
a simple schematic so this is y then we have this one and one of the transistors and this one and the other transistor so this is ground this one is VDD this one is P2 P1 N1 and N2 as you can see I considered each one of these as a simple switch so now let's see what happens for each one of these uh, rows so for the first row uh, P1 is on so that means that we have a connection between the two P2 is on N2 is off uh, and also N1 is off too so if we follow the path we see that Y is connected to VDD right because it is not connected to the ground these two transistors are off so there is no connection between this point which is Y and the ground but there are two connections between Y and VDD so that means that Y is going to be 1 so now let's see what happens for the other one this one this one okay for the next row p1 is on so we have p1 here p2 is off n1 is off n2 is on so is y connected to vdd or ground the answer to that question is that Y is connected to VDD. So even though P2 is off, but still P1 is on. So Y goes through P1 and will be connected to VDD. On the other hand, even though N2 is on, but N1 is off. So there is no connection between Y and the ground. So this is again going to be 1. So let's just go for the next row. See what happens next for the third row p1 is off p2 is on n1 is on n2 n2 is off so now is y connected to vdd or the ground again there is no connection between Y and the ground but there is a connection between Y and VDD that goes through P2 so that makes the output to be 1 so now let's just go to the final row and see what we have for the final row for the final row P1 is off P2 also is off, N1 is on, and N2 is also on. So now, is Y connected to VDD or the ground? As you can see, there are two paths that could connect Y from VDD, but both of them are off, right? P1 and P2 are off. But on the other hand, using this path we can connect Y to the ground the path that goes through uh, N1 and N2 so based on this since Y is connected to the ground and ground was considered to be zero uh, sorry VDD is one ground is considered to be 0 and VDD is considered to be 1 we can uh, see that Y is going to be 0 for the last row again if you look closely 
at the set of inputs basically all the possible combinations of the inputs and possible combinations possible results of the output it is exactly the same as the truth table that we had so we basically verified that this design is a correct representation of the two input NAND gate So generally speaking, uh, the general uh, gate structure for uh, CMOS gate is that we have a number of inputs. So this represents uh, more than one. So let's just say it like this, one or more than one. We have uh, some inputs some uh, the inputs go to a set of PMOS transistors that act as pull-up network basically they try to connect these input sorry they try to connect the output to VDD and these inputs are also connected to a set of uh, NMOS transistor which are called pull-down networks which try to connect the output to to the ground and this is basically the general idea that we have here too so we have these two acting as uh, the pull-up network and we have these two that act as the pull-down network so now Let's just have another example too. Of course, you do uh, the analysis for this on your own. So how do we build the three input NOR gate? So we have these uh, three PMOS transistors that act as pull-up network. And we have these three NMOS transistors that act as a pull down network. So, what you need to do is that you need to name this P1, P2, P3, N1, N2, N3. Create a table with A, B, C as the inputs, go through all the possible combinations, so 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 1, 0, 1, 0, all the way to 1, 1, 1, so we have 8 rows, 8 rows, then you have P1, P2, P3 and 1 and 2 and N3. So you need to find what are the state of each one of these transistors given the combination that you have for A, B and C. And then finally, based on that, you see whether for each one of these rows Y is connected to VDD in that case Y is 1 or is it going to be connected to GND or the ground in that case Y is going to be uh, 0 and then verify that if this design is uh, a 3 input NOR gate and matches the definition that we had for the uh, NOR gate so Gordon Moore was uh, another co-founder of Intel which co-founded uh, the company with Robert Noyce. Uh, there is a very famous law that you are probably uh, familiar with. It's called the Moore's Law. Of course, there are a like, couple of variations for this law, but the basic uh, definition um, for this law was that the number of transistors on a computer chip doubles every year, and that was based on some observations that they did in 1965. Since 1975, transistor counts have doubled every two years. 
So if you go through uh, some of the uh, very common uh, CPUs or I would say computer chips throughout the years, you see that if you plot them in a uh, semi-logarithmic scale, you see that the number of transistors in these computer chips are always increasing. Of course, this is this has uh, the number of transistors up to uh, 2006, 2007. But even then, you can see even a basic core to duo that you hardly find anywhere has m more than uh, 100 million transistors. So there are newer transistors that uh, have uh, more than uh, like a couple of billion transistors in them. So now that we have seen this, I want to talk about the last topic, uh, which is the power consumption. So the power is the energy consumed per unit of time. Here we consider the unit of time to be second, or you can consider it to be minute or hour too, right? The important thing is that uh, the energy per unit of time is the definition of power. So there are two types of uh, power consumption in uh, electric circuits or more specifically here uh, logic circuits that we have seen here. We have the dynamic power consumption and we have the static power consumption. So the dynamic power consumption is the power that is being used to charge uh, a transistor gate capacitance. Basically the power that you use to charge the capacitor at the gate of a transistor to make it on or off. So the energy uh, required to charge a capacitor with the size C to a voltage VDD. So basically you have let's say you have an empty capacitor, right? You want to charge it until it has a voltage of VDD between its two plates. So the energy required to charge a capacitor to get to that level is calculated by multiplication of the capacitance of the capacitor multiplied by the VDD squared. So what happens in a uh, computer circuit is that we usually have a cycle at which uh, the capacitors are being charged or discharged, right? So we basically have this pulse wave. So you can say that during one half of this pulse wave, you are charging. During the other half, you are discharging. So because of that, since circuits are running uh, at a nominal frequency of F here, we say that the charging happens only half of the time. So half of the time we are charging and half of the time we are discharging. So charging requires energy, but discharging does not require any energy. So the dynamic power consumption states that the uh, power that is being consumed to charge the capacitors in a given frequency F is calculated as one half of C VDD squared F. So this is what we call as the dynamic power. What about the static power? So the static power is the power consumed when no gates are being switched. This uh, power consumption is usually called by the quiescent uh, supply current. Here we call it IDD. It is also called the leakage current for the transistors. If you want to know it in more detail, I refer you to uh, the courses or the textbook for electronics course. So based on this, the electric power consumption has a simpler equation. 
it is the leakage current multiplied by VDD. So let's just take a look at one example. Here we want to estimate the power consumption of a wireless handheld computer. The VDD is 1.2 volt. The capacitance is 20 nanofarad. Basically it is 20 multiplied by 10 to the negative 9 farad. Uh, F is 1 gigahertz. So 1 multiplied by 10 to the positive 6 hertz. And then IDD or the leakage current is 20 milliamp or 20 multiplied by 10 to the negative 3 amps. So now that we have these uh, components, calculating the total power consumption for this circuit is very straightforward. We just have to plug all these numbers into the general equation that we have. So here we have the dynamic component. Here we have the static component of the power. So if I plug all these numbers, you see that the full power consumption for this circuit is 14.4. And as you can see, most of the power is being cons uh, consumed dynamically. And the static uh, power consumption is uh, usually very small and the reason for that is uh, uh, we have a very small leakage current but in computer systems usually even though the uh, value for the capacitance is very small but since we are working at a very high frequency um, the dynamic power consumption is usually larger so in this video we went underneath uh, the digital abstraction we saw how we can uh, build logic gate from transistors we saw the definitions of logic levels noise margins we got introduced to different logic families and how they are different and how they can be uh, interconnected we saw how transistors work in general we built several different logic gates using uh, CMOS transistors. We saw both uh, PMOS and NMOS transistors. And then finally we talked about the static power consumption and dynamic power consumption and how they both contribute to the total power consumption of any uh, logic circuit.